Welcome to our missionary stories for children. We're so excited. And I knew that I would never get all of this in because it is such a wonderful story. But we are going to try to finish this lesson and get most of the important things that happened to these women that, while they were in prison. And their love for God grew and grew and grew. And we're going to talk about love. In 1 John, chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. You can't love without knowing God. You cannot love without knowing God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that He might live through Him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the perpetuation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his Spirit. You see, without the Spirit of God, you cannot love, because the Spirit of God is love, joy, and peace. That's the fruit of the Spirit. And you cannot have any of those apart from being born again by the Spirit of God. And then he says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Now this is verse 15. God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. That's verse 14. I got ahead and read verse 15. And verse 16, And we know and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. This is what we need to know, the love of God today. And if you cannot love another person, it's because you don't have the love of God. We must love one another as He has loved us. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we see that God so loved us that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life life. We thank thee for the love that thou hast given to us for others. We thank thee that we cannot hate another person as a child of God. This world is full of hate. It's full of turmoil and it's full of evil. Forgive every person that is truly a child of God for not loving the way thou dost command us to. We fail in loving one another. Now, put thy perfect love in each of our lives and help us to manifest that love and that others may see the radiance of the glory and majesty of Christ in us as we're changed 
from glory to glory. Bless this time together. In Christ's name I pray, amen. You see, love has two basic elements, and this is what we must do. We, as true believers, love is a delight. Love is a desire. A desire to please, serve, and fellowship. Then my ministry becomes a delight. Do you enjoy serving the Lord? If you don't, then you're missing out on the greatest gift that God has given to us, love and serving. And when we get to heaven, we're going to see all of those people that we have hated. What are we going to do when we hate another person? We're not going to have any rewards. And if we're a child of God, and we say we're a child of God, and we hate another person, we might not even be in heaven. We may be down in this terrible place called hell that is not made for people, but made for the devil and his angels. And there's going to be nothing but hatred in this place, nothing but darkness, no light, nothing but evil. We must tell others about Christ so that no one will go to this terrible place. Every person that's listening today, you must tell someone about Christ. And as we, we just talked last week about Betsy and Corey and how they had gone from this other prison to this Ravensbrook and it was a wall, bricked wall with electric wire all the way across the top and how they hated this place. It was filled with lice and filled with fleas. And as we were talking about Betsy, they worked in a factory for a while. Then, after they worked in a factory, the factory closed down. And they had to dig dirt and clean up this place this that was rough, the dirt, smoothing this rough dirt out. And she was supposed to pick up a shovel full. Well, Betsy was sick. She weighed less than 100 pounds. She had lost so much weight. She was sick all the time. So a guard was watching her, and she would, like, pick up a spoonful when it was raining one day. The rain was terrible, and she couldn't pick up but a spoonful at a time. And he said to her, work harder. She said, a spoonful at a time will get the work done. And all the girls laughed, and he slapped her across the face. He hit her with a cord. She didn't have much blood anyway because she was anemic. And Corey, at that time, started to raise her shovel and hit this guard. And Betsy held her shovel down. You see, in our human nature, we can do these things, but she knew this wasn't God's will. But can't you imagine she wanted to hit him because he had hurt her most precious sister that she loved so much, and this Betsy had never hated anyone. She had never complained, even with the fleas. She said, Corey, we must in everything give thanks. And Corey said, I can't give thanks for the fleas. Well, this was Barracks 28, and they had 1,400 women there. 400 was all that was allowed to be in the area where they were in Barracks 28. There were 1,400. And Corey said, I will not give thanks for the fleas. So they started to tell the story about the Lord Jesus Christ to these women, just like they did before. And they had a, a Bible where they could do this and talk to them about the Lord. And when they would tell the women, some of them were Dutch, some of them were German, and some of them were from all of the different countries that they were invading. And one person would tell another person in another language and they would talk and they saw how these women changed when they heard the Word of God. 
their hatred turned to joy, even in this terrible place that they were in. Before they had left Holland, when they raided the house where Corey lived, they had this place where they had to go up and hide. When she was at the other prison, when she got a letter from her sister, Nola, she put on the back of the stamp that all the watches had been saved in the angel's crib. That meant every person that they had been hiding had been saved. They did not take a one of them with them. God protected those people that were there. They knew they were hiding. So one day, she, Corey was called in to Lieutenant Rams when she was at the other prison into his office. He asked her if she knew about God's underground. He didn't say God's underground. He said the underground. And she said, I don't know anything about it. He didn't say God's underground. He said underground. So she told him what she did. He put wood in a fire place, a big pot-bellied stove. He was so touched by what she was saying that he couldn't believe. He said, I can't believe that you are from such a righteous family. She went back. He called her back again. She told him what her family had done, how they had all served the Lord. He looked at her and she had counseled with thousands of people. She knew he was crying out for help. She said, you are in darkness. But Jesus Christ is the light of the world. As they were talking, he, she told him that Jesus was the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. As he was talking to her, he said, I wish, with tears in his eyes, this guard, this lieutenant, the guards that had been so cruel, this lieutenant now, he said, I wish I could raise my family like that. She said, it's not too late. While she was talking with him, he burned up all of her records. No record of what they had done. He stood there and burned them all up. Another time he called her to come in. William and Noli were there and he called Betsy. They hadn't seen each other since they'd been in prison. Now, I, can't, I do not have the exact times that they, had been, they, they were in prison, but this was in June, and they had gone there in February. They had been raided. Their house had been raided. And when they got there, they were so excited to see her family, and they said it was to read her father's will. And he, this lieutenant, left out of the room where they were and let them be together for a while. He came back in. After the will had been read, Papa didn't have anything. They, they, it was everything had been taken except their house. And that was left for the family. So William prayed and he said, Lord, save this man and his family and protect them. This man had tears in his eyes. Why don't we have love for one another like that? Why don't we tell others what God can do? 
You see, God's word says, this is a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Now, loving one another is the love that he had for us, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. You see, her father was willing to die for the Jews. He knew that, that they could be arrested. He knew they could be taken any minute. But this happened four years. They were in Holland before they finally arrested them and put them in prison. And they couldn't even go out after 10 o'clock. The Dutch couldn't. They knew what was going on. They knew the evil and the corruption. And you know what? Corey said that it just seemed like the whole world was dark with evil. The whole world. They couldn't understand this evil that was going on. So we have seen how God was so good to the family, but now they're in this awful place and they're giving out God's word every night by a small light. You know why the, the barracks, how they could do this? The barracks were filled with fleas and the guards would not come near that barracks. That's how God protected them with their Bible because they said if anyone's found with a Bible, that's six months or even murder. The fleas, Corey, Thank God for the fleas. So her sister, after this, began to get worse and worse. So one night she was awakened. Corey was awakened. She said, Corey, you have to wake up. I have to tell you something. And Corey told her to stop. She wanted to sleep. But she said, after we get out of this place, she said, we must buy a home to help these people to be a center called rehabilitation center. We must have a house with a beautiful garden outside and the inside with beautiful floors where they just shine and sparkle and pillars. She told her, these people that are in here are going to need help when they get out. I know that they're, I know we're going to get out of this place. We don't know when. It wasn't long after that, a few days, that they took her, Betsy in, she had a 104 temperature, they took her in to the infirmity, never gave her any medicine, sent her back, she wasn't any better. Then, a few days later, they took her out, and she never returned. She went to look for her to see what happened. Many people were taken, many of the older people were taken out and never returned. They could smell flesh every day burning where they would shoot people over nothing. And they could smell this burning every day that they were there. They could hear the gunshots every day. She went and this one little lady that loved these women, she took her in and showed her her Betsy, her sister. And she had a beautiful, sweet peace on her face. She said, the Lord has taken her to be with him. My father taught me years ago that when a believer is taken into heaven, we're not to weep, we're to rejoice. Betsy's suffering is over. She was so happy. She was so happy because she had worried about her sister because she was so weak. Herself having the flu when they first came to her home and the awful things that she went through, nothing hurt her worse than to see her sister suffer. That's how it is with our loved ones. We had rather suffer ourselves that see our children suffer, those of us that love the Lord. Do you think you're suffering today? This family, a righteous family, and every one of them serving the Lord and how they had suffered. 
We cannot understand the things that happen in this life, but we know that we have eternity, which is longer and longer and longer than our minds can ever think. Eternity with Christ. So one day she was called to the office. Corey was called to the office. And she didn't know what was going to happen because she just thought this may be the last day, minute that she will be on this earth. But they had made a mistake and let her out. And she could not believe. She was free. They gave her her clothes that she had left there. They took all of their things. And you know, there was her watch in there that they had taken from her when she first was arrested, was taken. And she could not understand that. And you know, this lieutenant had to have something to do with that. She went and she went to uh, the airport and she wanted a ticket. And she said, I want a ticket to Amsterdam, to Israel. And she mentioned all the places. And she said, what is your destination? She said, heaven. She said, what? She said, heaven, H-E-A-V-E-N, heaven. This lady didn't understand, but there was a Chinese man standing in back of her in line. And he said, I know what you're talking about. I have my ticket to heaven also. And she said, will you tell her how she can have her ticket into heaven? Because without being born again, she will never be able to get in heaven. And I want her to be there. So she got back to Holland. She saw her sister Noli. She saw her, William, her brother William. But his son was still in prison. And later he never came out. He died in prison. She told her sister what she wanted to do of the vision that her sister had. She started speaking everywhere. At first she was depressed and she was sad. I've got to serve the Lord, she said. I have to reach people for Christ. She started speaking in churches and homes, any place someone would let her, to tell her the awful things that had happened and the hatred and the terrible things that Hitler had done and the Nazis, and how he talked to German people into doing these things, some young kids even, young boys, just children. So she began to go from place to place. She told everybody what had happened. And she, one day, some people would say, the war isn't over, the Nazis are still in Holland. What can, what can you do? How can you have a house and have all of these people come and live in it? One day, some well-dressed lady in elegant clothing came up to her, and she said, I have a house for those for the rehabilitation. And she told her about Betsy's vision of this house. And she said, I didn't want her to think I wasn't thankful and I didn't have great gratitude for this offer. She said, my husband, I'm a widow lady. My children are all married and I would like to let you ha use this house. She went to look at it. It was almost identical to what she had visioned in Betsy's dream. She said, this is just what I want. They used that house. They gave their house at the head also to the people that came back. She traveled to 66 different countries. She came to America to tell people what had happened. She wasn't received very well at first, but she said, I will be back. Because while she was in America, her brother William died. She went to Cuba before it became communist. She went to the school there. While she was there, they told her she had five. The principal said, you have five minutes to speak to the girls in the school. She said, just give me a little more time. I've, I want to tell them so much. Five minutes, she said. She had talked for four minutes 
and the electricity went off. She told them of all the evil and the corruption that had happened. Told them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And when she did, one girl came up later and she said, I know why the electricity went off so you could tell us about Jesus. She went to Africa to the most horrible place she had ever seen, a prison where it was so crowded that the people, many of the men were outside and could not go inside. They were sitting in mud up to their knees. It had rained, the hardest rain she had ever seen when her and this other lady went to visit this prison. There was such anger on these men's faces, such anger. And she told them, I know what you're in. My sister died in prison. There were 95,000 women died. At the end, after she was finished, she asked how many wanted to be saved. Every man there wanted to be saved. Every guard there wanted to be saved. They went to the car with her to follow her out, and they said, come back and tell us more. She couldn't come back and tell them more, but there was another lady that did, and she told her that there was fruit all the time. Every time they would go back, there was fruit that these young men wanted to know more. Another time she went to Germany, even to Germany. She saw after she told them what had happened, she said God's love is like an ocean and your sins are down in that water. And he puts up a sign, no fishing. He never remembers them anymore. And this man came up after she was finished. He was a guard, a cruel guard at Ravensbrook. She looked at him. She couldn't have love for him. He said, lady, please forgive me. He stuck out her hand and she said, Lord, help me to love this man. Help me to forgive him. As soon as she prayed, there was a beautiful smile came on her face and she reached out and touched his hand. When she shook hands with him, all the hatred that she had was taken from her because she knew God's verse. This it was so wonderful. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Is there someone that you can't forgive? Why? Jesus Christ has done more for you. He. go to and then she died at 91 years old she didn't die she went to heaven to be with the Lord